All um, right. Welcome well, to the Talkies. Uh, uh, shelter in Place Edition. Shelter in Place Edition. Yeah. Oh, edition. Too bad we don't shelter in the same place. Nope. We don't. No. no we Not actually, anymore. We actually live in different places. Yeah. Unfortunately. We are all uh, in our uh, quarantine places, but that is (laughs) not going studio. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's just you two. I mean, are out of luck. I I, I went out non quarantine and uh, took the whole studio with me. I have all kinds of things. Yeah. As much as I do. Wow. I took everything. That's uh, I have uh, obscene Taylor. I've got the zoom. I've got the capture card. (laughs) What the? (laughs) (laughs) Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry i like that anyway, one I like, I like mine we've been reduced to gimmicky <laughs> tricks is that what we're doing now yeah yeah that's, that's yeah. what I'm we goofed sorry here. i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> uh we're here to talk about a movie what are we talking about what movie a ghost story what a ghost movie? story a ghost, ghost story. story all right uh, i have seen this what's as of yesterday last night uh lowry something lowry oh lowry, lowry. Yeah, hey, David Lowry. David Lowry. David Lowry. Yep. David's doing uh, the, the Green Knight coming up. He yep. also did the uh, Disney's live action uh, version of Pete's Dragon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw. Um, seems a little out of his repertoire. Yeah. The, bit, uh, the IMDb trivia said that he funded a ghost story with money from that movie. Oh, well, see, really? that's how it works. That's yep. how it works. That's interesting. Go make a sell out movie and then use your sell out cash to make a, a real movie yeah one for you one for me <laughs> that makes That's sense how, uh, yeah can That's we get that deal got done. can we get that deal no don't. how do you we get that deal that. no uh, <laughs> no you have to go to film school you wouldn't make star wars for disney so you no. can go go <laughs> no way <laughs> i wouldn't no. do that <laughs> i have integrity <laughs> i would not be paid millions of dollars to do star wars that's very big of you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's dive into this. Um, so I loved this movie the first time I watched it, and maybe even more the second time. Two times. Boom, I, I said it. Uh, Two love times. It. Yep, this is my second time. Taylor. My first time. I also pretty much mostly loved it. I liked a lot of it uh time to play with the, the way they play with time is awesome um yep and then i have some issues too uh, this is a moment in history here it's going to go down in the books i 100 percent agree with taylor 100 <laughs> percent uh, agree with taylor that you mostly loved it yeah why does it go down in history because i'm that, agreeing with to taylor. me that don't agree <laughs> I, I, I oh, mostly it's I mostly, because you agreed with Taylor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all. I mostly that's like it. actually. Uh, I, I I couldn't decide if you would love it or hate it, and uh, I could thought D would hate it. I, I I did too, but at the same time, there was so much of it that is like right in line with stuff that D thinks is really cool. That's so funny. This is, this is, that's what this podcast is now. It's <laughs> let's decide what D thought about this. Yes, it is. <laughs> what is exactly. D gonna think about this? What is yeah. he gonna think? <laughs> yeah. Me and Taylor typically know what each other will think about a movie. <laughs> but you're the wild card. Wild. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, I mostly loved it. There were some things that I I didn't I didn't really have a, a whole lot of problems, but there were some things that I'm like, yeah. But mostly loved the editing, which was also edited by the director. Oh he edited. Oh, it? was it? Yeah, yeah, the editing is awesome. Yeah. Um so yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I remember when this movie was coming out, everyone was hyping it up, saying it was really good. I, I wanted to see it, but I never movie. got a chance to. I'd never even Matthias heard of it. loved it. Matthias. Yeah. It's probably the scariest thing he's seen. <laughs> the most he, horror he's willing to get. He's not uh, yeah. a horror guy. <laughs> no, no, adamantly. Uh it's a a very, very sad movie. And I love oh, movies yeah. that do sad really well. Yeah, it's crazy sure. sad. Yeah, yeah. it um, it kind of like, I think it's amazing how it recontextualizes a, a ghost story. You know, typical ghost hauntings. You know, yeah, and it really, really makes you empathize with the ghost. And it's saying that, like, in most ghost stories, the ghost is treated as like another monster, kind of a thing, like some other being. 
But in this movie, it's saying that a ghost is your significant other. A ghost is somebody you know. Like everybody is going to be a ghost. Have you at ever some seen point, you know the movie Ghost, Taylor? Yes, I have seen Ghost. You have seen that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was Which kind of does that too, I guess. The way the way you just described this movie is, I, I thought, I thought was a really neat thing that they did, which they, they turned a person into an object that you then build empathy with, right? Mm-hmm. Because of the mm-hmm. sheet, which was a, a mm-hmm. silly gimmick, but uh, took away its humanity. Yeah, it took away the humanity. There were times when the ghost felt almost animal to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do, doing just a lot of reactions, and you're like, "Oh, I, I could see myself in that spot," as if it's not a real person, but it it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it the existence of the ghost seemed uh, to me came across as like the the ultimate hell. Totally, that that's yeah. what it felt like to me. It was just just the the way that time was passing, and yet he had like no real uh, influence that matter right. it makes sense how uh in that situation after generations have passed you're like reaching out trying to influence the world somehow so it makes sense why the cliche is that you know the books fall over the uh, the photo falls off the shelf right and then this movie gives a reason that makes total sense like i know why i would do that too like yeah. I would totally I, knock some stuff off shelves. I remember the first time watching this feeling fairly certain that the ghost was symbolic. It was all allegorical and that this was going to have more to do with his girlfriend as the character that the story was revolving around until he picks up the glass of milk. And then I'm like, oh, what the? Okay, he's an actual ghost. This is actually about a real ghost. Yeah. And uh, and I feel like the first third of the movie doesn't really take a stand on, you know, it feels more poetic and symbolic than anything else. Like we're just talking about memory and grief. Yeah, definitely grief. Uh Uh-huh. But then it, the story centers around a, a world where ghosts are real. Yeah. I, did you guys have, uh, because, because of the way that I had this set up, I wasn't sure if it's different, but the, this, the scene where the ghost looks out the window to the other ghost, uh, were there subtitles for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. There were. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, those aren't, uh, yeah, those are permanent subtitles. Yeah. So on yeah. <laughs> my, my version, since I already had subtitles on it, uh, the subtitles said in, in parentheticals uh, telepathically without audio. <laughs> yeah. I, I also had subtitles on and I saw that. Yeah. Saw that. That's funny. Yeah. That's really funny. I turned that, them off that, to see, but, but yeah. I thought that was so cool. I, I loved that, that they subtitled that for the audience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was neat. I, I thought uh, they used that really well that's the subtitles that that are actually used really well and i got really sad for the other ghost the first when she yeah. disappears but no and she's like who are you waiting for and she's like i i don't remember oh yeah because yeah. that's like right when he f- he was a brand new ghost at that point yeah. yeah and you're like oh he's he's in trouble yeah this like, is gonna be bad yeah i thought it was interesting that, it, that he became like a higher dimension ghost at the end where he was like a ghost looking on his ghost. Yeah. That was strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, and why did the time loop? That got to me a little bit. So yeah, the I, ending I thought that might not get to right. Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually really felt the movie could have ended. Uh, when he jumped off? No, nah, before, even before that. Even before when that. the same ending, have the same ending, but without the big time loop. Just yeah. have him, the first time he's almost pulling out the letter... He pulls it out, sees it, and disappears. And it, I think it would have been pretty much just as good of a movie. I think it would have been a better movie. W- without been. going back to the pioneer time yeah, and all that. I didn't need any of that. That yeah. was just kind of I don't know unnecessary. That, I didn't the, get anything It out was of that. cool, but it, it was added. It felt I, added. It did feel added. I, I don't know. A lot of this did feel like 
the whole movie feels like something that the director wanted to do. It doesn't feel like totally. it's a story that he wanted to tell specifically. It was like, I really want to tell a story this way yeah. and show yeah. it this way. Yeah. To me, it was yeah, more, yeah, it's, it, I think it was more about exploring uh, ideas rather yeah. than telling a story. Yeah. More the, or less. I l- loved time passage, like the editing, the, the way yeah. they're using editing. Yes. Was yes. So cool. I spe- the, the corpses decaying on the prairie there was, that was really, cool. really cool. Was yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just like how, um, how it's like it's just it's shot reverse shot, but it's time, huge time jumps ten yeah. years, twenty years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's only one major scene with dialogue, like major dialogue, and it's that guy at the party the getting all yeah. philosophical. Yeah, you know, that with the overalls enough. on. Yeah, like that. That scene was uh, so different from the rest of the movie that it made it like crazy intense. Yeah, Listening to him talk. It was just like intense. It was. Pretty it kind of felt like a key to the movie. It did. Like it felt like they were trying to say something with it, and I didn't like that yeah. about it. It felt. It felt that, like it was. It was like on a. What do you call it? Like on a soapbox. A little bit, yeah. And my thing with the ending is that I felt as soon as it started doing a time loop, I felt like the movie stopped saying stuff and stopped commenting on themes and exploring ideas. And became more about being clever than anything else. Oh, interesting. Like, like how so? Like how clever? What do you mean? Because we go back in time. Well, I back in time. Maybe, maybe back in time. Maybe the universe looped maybe over forward, on itself. Yeah. Who knows? yeah. <laughs> and and that sequence doesn't really add anything other than showing a different time period and showing death. And then we're watching him see the same things we've already seen. Just there the, and then the, he disappears at the end and we don't get to see what the note said or anything like that the way fine, I, I see the the time looping like yeah. uh the way i see it feeding into the theme is that it 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 compounds the whole uh isolation aspect that if you're you're now living the same life again and now you're even lonelier because now you can't you can't you can't control any of this further you're you're further disconnected from it um I still think it could have done without it, and I still don't think it was a very strong thing. But, uh, but I, I do think it, it was, was maybe maybe it was more about re- reiterating, maybe, yeah. and because I felt like all that was said already. The, you know? Well, one like thing's said, for sure: the like third compounding instead of reiterating. the third act felt like a different movie from the first. Yeah, uh, I can see. That. You know, if if you if you just if you look back and compare those last scenes to where we came from, it. it it almost feels disingenuine to the rest of the movie. I mean, the, the, the first 30 minutes of the movie was comprised of about five scenes that were all crazy long. Yeah. The pie stuff like the, the pie scene. We sit staring at his corpse on the table for like three minutes before he sits up, you know, that was and the it, only it, long shot that I liked, the corpse part. You didn't like the pie scene? No. That was awesome. No, I, I felt like it was calling attention to itself. It's it's like I'm, it's one of those things where I'm just watching it and then I'm just like, I I get it. I understand what you're doing. That we're we're sitting here, and and the the experience didn't show me anything. The 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 last part of that scene was actually I felt like provided great context for the whole thing where she just ran away and th- immediately threw up and it, it contextualized everything we just saw, right? We're just like, oh, of course she's going to throw up because she just mashed this whole pie into her face. But the while doing it, I'm just like, it feels like it was trying to be clever to me. It feels like it was a person who's saying, hey, what if we sat on the shot for really, really, really long, like longer than anyone else has done a shot? And, and we just really get into that feeling of isolation and sadness and grief. Like, I feel like well, it worked that, to, for the to me. That's what it did. Like yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, like it, it might work. So for some it felt really intense. It, it felt, it felt cheesy to me. I just, I was not, I was not at all connected to it. I was connected yeah. to the rest of the movie, but, but like stuff like that's that. when I was the most in to the movie was yeah. the, the first act. Um, but that's also why I really felt like this was going to be a story about her. And that the ghost was something she had to figure out to leave behind. Like Taylor and said, with the ideas, it feels like this movie was a movie about ideas. 
Yeah. You know, that yeah. makes them, that makes more sense now with your, you sit on this girl for so long, you feel like it's going to be about the girl it ends yeah. up not being about her. It's because she was just another idea, you know? Well, you pretty much sit in her perspective for, for the first third of the movie and then his perspective for the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't feel dual. They don't feel like combined, like marriage story was this. Yeah. 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 This feels completely separate. It does feel like a bunch of ideas. Yeah. Together. Oh, this movie sucked. <laughs> this movie's actually bad. I kept thinking about how the movie is not, it's not a movie that I'm get, ever going to watch again. I'll, I'll probably tell people, Hey, I like this movie and I might recommend yep. it, but it's, it's not, it's not something that stands out to me. It's not something that I could say, Hey, well, that's a great movie. It's, it was just, yeah. it was interesting. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I really yeah, a lot like of it, it a lot. Really great for me. And, and I, I could easily watch it again. Um, but it is one of those movies where uh, it always kind of kind of bothers me because I know that most most people I know who take the time to sit down and watch this movie are going to rave to me about how brilliant and like perfect it was. Yeah, they'll be like, "Oh my gosh, it was a, a masterpiece." That, that's and I'll be I like, feel. "Well, but yeah. that's not really." I feel. I feel like I feel like. Yeah. I feel like they know that people are going to do that. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like the most, what what's the, f- the most film festival kind of movie if ever <laughs> is what it feels like. Uh, well, that's what kind of filmmaker he is. Yeah. I mean, like if you look at uh, all of his, his work, except makes, for Pete's um, dragon. It makes a uh, green Knight So interesting. green night. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll it look totally different. I'm totally down to see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it now because Mon- yeah, I, I like this. I like his style. The personality was really cool, and the editing yes. was brilliant. Yes. Yeah, I think like I liked almost all of Ghost Story. Like I love the time stuff, and I love the idea of eternity as a, a horrifying thing because it kind of is to me. So like, I kept watching this, and I'm like, it was reminding me of. Um, that eternal life. Yes, yeah, it, it reminded me of that lot. too. And I was like, it's like, no, <laughs> no, they're doing it. <laughs> it's as if no one else has done this before. No, uh, you have to come up with it with a completely unique film, Taylor. You yes, they've been, they've been <laughs> talking want, about to. talked about the Earth going um, or the the Sun going red giant and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They described the the uh, well, not the the crunch, big crunch, is what that guy was talking yeah, about. Yeah, the big the, crunch at the end. Yeah. Uh, you know what was weird was that when the time hop happened, I didn't understand one why it even happened at all because ghosts can't kill themselves, obviously, but maybe I guess they can. And two, why did he end up in the 1800s as opposed to any other time period? Well, he probably was in all the other time periods and just chose to show that one. Certainly could have. Or why didn't they choose to see to show the? Or it could be that he's like he's like emotionally attached to the 1800s. house, no, the house, the property itself. The 1800s. And oh, so when he the first he ended up yeah, yeah, yeah he ended up where the house first began. Right. You know, I was thinking that he must be connected to the house somehow. But then after it was demolished, he was around for like a mall or a parking well, lot that was built. It's the land. Yeah. Cream. It's the yeah. same land, same area, the same land. Like sure. But I mean, like, like, like you just said, like when he restarted to the 1800s, it's not the same. It's the same land, but that's when the house plot was started. Yeah. So it's like that has significance, but the land doesn't. Yeah. I want to see the, the movie where you see him haunting that office complex. This meeting has been upgraded. <laughs> really? what it says that's right does that mean we passed 40 minutes uh, uh i don't know did they just charge me money <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad i don't i don't have any so the joke's on them <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> uh yeah the the the, the different strains of logic and different strains of uh storytelling here tells me more that it's a it's a thing that this person really wanted to do that mr lowry was like i really want to do this and specifically like you guys just said uh, he i mean he funded it with his own money so it, it makes sense that he really wanted to do something specific to him and he wasn't trying to tell a story of sorts i mean he was 
but I think it was more about the ideas. Depends on exactly what you mean by story, like, like the like, you know, like as the opposed story, to like a. You could say this movie is the story of uh, a wife's dead husband. Yeah. Who, you know, yeah. haunts. But it's saying that it it doesn't really adhere to traditional story structure. There's yeah. Well, when I say that it's not con- concerning itself with the story only, it's because there's a whole lot more going on with this movie. Yeah quite obviously right there's a lot of contrasting ideas that are taking place very very long shots you know very specific kinds of edits very specific kind of camera movements even with contrasting ideals like we talked about with uh one half or one third of the movie being about the girl the second third second two thirds being about the guy it doesn't feel like it's supposed to be a cohesive um a cohesive message at all it's it's more like a project it's a it's a movie right it's a see in other words taylor d has a very rigid definition of what a story is and this doesn't (laughs) fit into his little box yes of what a story is exactly (laughs) yeah it's just it's a movie that's just pontificating just keeps going talking yeah. and talking oh yeah. like the guy in the suspenders and the guy in the overalls exactly yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's like take that but filter it through visuals and then yeah. you have ghost story and i like did you guys it. and uh, yeah i think for what it is it's cool yeah uh, it's really yeah. cool i, I like great. the authorship there that's nice um yeah you're making me enjoy it less. I enjoyed it more before we started talking about it. <laughs> we always enjoy movie less when well, we start analyzing the, it. My biggest gripe not always, literally not always. is just the ending. Like the ending is my biggest gripe. I mean, other than that, yeah. like I have like so I, I, I love most them, like this is movie. not this is yeah. going to be out of Taylor's uh, wheelhouse now. <laughs> yeah. It like it immediately left. I was like, man, this movie was freaking awesome and then it started doubling up on itself. It's like, all right, this is stupid. How, how is that? Yeah. How is that? make it any worse though and what's wrong with the time loop i don't like it was perfect up till that point pretty much i don't like it i don't like it because um i've seen it so many times to where it becomes boring so as soon as that cliche comes in it's like okay i'm instantly bored and now i'm trying to look for things that like what new idea is it going to project through this this mechanism that's been done to death. Like, is it at least going to say something new with that? And I don't think it did. I think it just literally retraced its steps, literally showed like, whoa, isn't it crazy that the ghost is now watching the ghost that he was earlier. And now it's all looping in on itself. Isn't that crazy? And now he's going to get the the note. And then he doesn't. How, how Kenny reacted to my thought about, uh, what was it? What was it that you said? Oh, the the pie shot. How how you reacted to to the pie shot is like how I reacted to Taylor's thought about the time loop. <laughs> I'm very connected to it, and and you're very disconnected from it, right? How uh, you felt about the pie shot is how I feel about the time loop. Shot. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean. Um, yeah, I I felt I didn't feel great about the time loop, but uh, I. I th- I saw why it was done, and I thought it, it communicated the theme properly. So I just I, I just felt like it was disingenuous to the rest of the movie. The milk that... part and the dishes part felt disingenuous to the movie to me. That felt like the most contrasted. And like I'm like, why the hell they could have took that yeah, part it, out and it the did whole movie say like the same. It does open a little can of worms of like, why isn't he constantly interacting with the world? You know, right? Well, well I did... started asking myself like when he was trying to get the note. Like, clearly, that's that's a turning point in the film, right? When he's trying to get the note. And he goes to do the scratching sound, and you're like, oh, that's what the scratching sounds are about, you know, whenever ghosts are making scratching sounds or whatever, it's him trying to get the note. And I'm like, okay, well, why doesn't he grit like, a tool or something? And I don't want those thoughts coming to my head. I mean, it's like, if he can interact with the world in those ways... Turn your brain off! <laughs> I just, this is an art film. Turn your brain off! <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't analyze any film ever is the lesson here <laughs> why are we here why are we here why why are we even talking <laughs> why live just enjoy the movie turn your brain off just get coronavirus just get coronavirus die too soon 
<laughs> too current <laughs> too soon <laughs> too, too current. <laughs> uh 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 i had oh yes so when the nihilist in overalls was doing his rant and just at the end of it uh the ghost seems to be getting intense and the lights start to do their flashy thing right and then we time jump and the house is like a wreck but we start by looking at the light bulb that we had just been looking at before and it has blown out and that it, it made me feel like they were inferring that he went like ballistic, but it just wasn't on camera. I had the same thought that at, at that moment, he like went crazy and thrashed that whole party. And that's why no one's ever moved into the house again. I had the same thought, but uh, I, I got after I realized that I had that thought, I suddenly realized I was reading a lot into the movie and just, it stopped being interesting to me. So I stopped thinking about it. <laughs> I turned my brain. Why you don't like art point. movies? You don't like reading into <laughs> stuff at all. I love reading into stuff uh, when it's thematically appropriate, but like reading into the actions of the characters specifically to make plot points happen wasn't interesting. Uh, but I that, thought that was I thought that idea was really cool. That's where my brain went. That's exactly where my brain went. I was like, oh, the bul- bulb shattered. He must have like shattered the bulb and and got scared, and everyone never never came here again. And that's why. I See, that's it. awesome. That's awesome that that'd be and that dude, way. And, you're just and shooting not down show your it. own ideas. <laughs> it just yeah. wasn't interesting because 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 <laughs> I don't know I don't know why it just was it just wasn't interesting. The story yeah. the story's still cool. I still like the whole. Uh, sorry, doesn't sorry. sound like it. My rigid uh, definition of story. <laughs> I didn't yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did like the movie. I know it's hard to tell because like we're criticizing it. It's it, you can criticize something you like. No, you can't. I think I think you can. Pretty sure you can. Prove it. Look, I criticize I, I D all the time, and, and I don't like me. D. <laughs> <laughs> I like Taylor, and I never criticize him. Therefore, <laughs> we never criticize the talkies. The talkies sucks. Oh dang! It has terrible structure. <laughs> It does not fit into my definition of what a podcast is. Your very is. narrow definition of a podcast. Yes, I, I have a. It's not narrow. It's strict because mm. I have values and standards. Okay, you guys. And don't I have tell values you, and standards. I know what a podcast stuff. is supposed to look like, and uh, the talkies is garbage. <laughs> it's, it's not it. We're doing this over Zoom. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than that. It, it can yeah. get worse. We can shout. Just across oh, it, it can get worse, actually. You're right. We could what? Sh- we, shout? We could, we could use uh, uh, walkie-talkies. Oh, that'd actually be really cool. <laughs> All right, pizza time. Who goes first? Uh, uh, I'll go first. Okay. Kenny goes first. Yeah, this, uh, this would definitely be uh, a pizza where you get, like, artisan ingredients. <laughs> That's stupid. But <laughs> I just realized how stupid that sounds, but yeah. I meant it, That's genuinely. Ex- I wasn't exactly. trying to make a joke. Uh, that, you know, if you go to some place and they offer like, like instead of mushrooms, they have like fancy, like morels, they have truffles, you know, they and truffles. Truffle. Yeah. <laughs> black black truffle fish. oil on top of your pizza. <laughs> Just like, and you know, you're, you eat it and you have that, that sort of weird, interesting experience of tasting something that's good, but shouldn't normally be a, associated with pizza. So you're like, no, it's good. It's really, really good. Um, maybe not how I'd make a pizza. <laughs> not how I'd do it. <laughs> not how I'd do it. Uh, strangely, I'd say the exact same pizza. <laughs> wow. That's because you're my boy. Boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah I He's say, my boy. I would say. Take yeah, that, Taylor. They, they put the black. What do you truffle, got? What do you got? That black truffle oil on it. And then you go. To mm, what do pizza, I got? Like, black truffle doesn't taste good on it. They're like, but I see what they're doing. Yeah, you're like the black. It actually doesn't taste good, but still, good, but, but still cool. But it's cool. Pretty cool. I think yeah, yeah I that is pretty it. cool. Like I'm no. going to tell everyone that I had black truffle pizza. <laughs> I'm going to brag about it. I'm going to post it on Facebook. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But honestly, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not great. It's great. <laughs> good point. Well. <laughs> 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 is that what it is right there? Uh, no, actually, this is not representative of the pizza <laughs> I would give for this movie. This movie is a um, what are they called? The you know the uh, 
uh, not Neapolitan, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> margarita. Margarita, you margarita said this pizza. Last time. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I always think <laughs> margarita pizzas Chocolate are called Neapolitan strawberry pizza. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is the fanciest of fancy margarita pizzas. Um, specifically, three slices of mozzarella on it, and the uh, Wait, what's kind of like a slice of mozzarella? You know, like a little circle, like. They just put it on there and it melts, and that's like all that there is for cheese on there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But mm. and, it, and it's really delicious, and you're eating this, you're like, wow, this is some gourmet <laughs> shit right here. And then there's... that's what they say. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah, they that's, say. What they, that's what they. That's what the when the cook shit. finished it, this is some gourmet <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, but the um, uh, there's one like one. Like a little, like uh, let's say uh, maybe a moldy olive got on the corner, and you don't notice it. And and I took a bite of that, and I was like, "That's disgusting." That's the time loop. Yes, thank you, thank you for, for clearing that out. But honestly, the I did kind of want to leave that up to interpretation. We'll so. see. The thing is, like, because I don't of my age, that. I love moldy olives. How old are you? How old are you? Because of my age. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why? Well, that was great. Yeah, that was that was great. That was great. Zoom is a success for this. Turns it turns out Zoom wins. 